Okay, everyone, so where we last left off, we had two separate Google Fusion tables, one that has our data and the number of our district name, uh, the number of the school districts, and the other that has the number of our school district and the geometry uh, or the KML describing those shapes. So now, next step is to join these two together. So I'm going to go ahead. I like to I like to start with my uh, with my KML file. It doesn't actually matter which um, doesn't actually matter which table I begin with because what's going to happen is I'm going to specify the two tables that I want Google Fusion tables to zip together, um, and it's going to create a new table. So it will actually leave the original tables untouched. Um, to do this, I'm going to say I'm going to go to File and say Merge. And um, they've actually improved this interface quite a lot in the last year or so. Um, so it's assuming that, obviously, that the table that I'm on is one of the ones that I want to merge. And so now I choose the other one that I want to merge with. And I select this from my file of existing uh, fusion tables. And now it's saying confirm source of match. This means choose the column that you want it to coordinate the two, uh, the two tables on, right? This is the, the shared column that they're going to be zipped together on. And so Fortunately, it's giving me this preview. It doesn't look like a whole lot here, and you'll also notice that they're not in the same order. That is okay. Now, I'm just gonna click Next. In choosing columns, I can decide which, you know, what, what columns are actually relevant to the, uh, the final product that I'm making. I definitely need to keep the geometry. That's the actual descriptor of the shape. Vertex count, shape length, and shape area, probably not as important to me. Important notes didn't seem to have anything in it. So I'm just gonna stick with the two, uh, you know, the sort of uh, the main columns that I'm interested in. You'll notice that I'm only ending up with one district name column, right? Because this is the column that it's matching on. So when I choose merge, it's going to create this new table. It's automatically, uh, it's automatically named it for me. And I can just go to this third table. So I'm now going to go ahead and close my, my source tables. Um, and see what I can get from this. Oh, this is interesting. So it's actually, <laughs> it didn't work out exactly as I had hoped because as you can see, I've actually gone ahead, I've actually lost that number. It's kept district name one. Oh no, sorry, here it is. Okay, it's like, that seems strange, right? So school district has become the first column. Uh, this district name one, right, which actually is kind of meaningless at this point. And then we have the two, uh, we have the KML and we have the median percent. So once again, I go to Math of Geometry, doesn't look like a whole lot has changed. Why? Well, because of course I haven't actually told it to make this a chloroplast map, right? The default color is red, everything is red, because I haven't told it to shade these regions on anything. So now I'm going to come to this and say change map styles. So map styles is where I actually sort of determine the buckets for my chloroplast map. Um, now, it's going to be an exercise for you all to determine actually how to do this, but what I can see is that if I choose under polycons, I choose fill color, right, which is the typical way that we uh, read chloroplast maps. Um, I don't want this to be a fixed color, which is the default. What I want to do is I want to define, uh, let's say, a gradient for now. Um, again, for you all, you're going to need to put some, we're going to want to see you put some thought into exactly what you decide to shade by. Um, probably it's going to be buckets. Right, and um, actually, we'll use buckets here, um, but we're going to want to see some thoughtfulness into how you how you designate your buckets. Um, but what we can see is uh, we're going to say divide into two buckets, and now it's asking me which column I want to be shading this on. I'm going to choose median grad percent, and this gives us a nice overview of what the range is. So I have everything from 17% to uh, 0.17 to 0.87, right? So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go up to 0.5 and 0.5 to 1. And I'm going to change these colors. Now, again, we can see this is where our, um, you know, where our shading possibilities come in. And so I'm going to take a binary approach, I'm going to say, oh, you're not doing so well if you're below 50% and you're doing okay if you're above 50%. Obviously, this is extremely facetious, right? This is not a really uh, good way to do this. Um, we'll be expecting you guys to, to do something more, uh, more thoughtful in your version. But I also want to point out that I can change the opacity here. I tend to like an opacity of about 80%. And voila. So we can see very clearly that there are certain regions that are below 
that 80%. Now, the other thing you can see is my pop-up window here has some information in it, right? The number of the school district, the district name, it's corresponding to what else but the columns in my table. So if I go back here, I can see, right, school district is the number, it skips geometry because that's already visualized on the map, and then it uses district name one, median grad percent, etc. Um, this is a particularly meaningful. Also, we don't always want our descriptor text to actually strictly match the information that we have um, as our column names. Sometimes column names, we aren't the ones who generate them. And if we need to be able to update our data, we want to make sure that we're not beholden to what those column names are because they may not be the best descriptors. Um, fortunately, Fusion Tables has an option to change the info window layout. And here's where I can decide we can use an automatic uh, version to just say these are the columns and by default generally it will show that pop-up window will show the first 10 columns of information um, but I can also customize this and I can say something like uh, New York City I can say school district number right and that's going to be so these curly braces is how it how it delineates the appropriate uh, the actual value from the appropriate column, uh, the appropriate row, and I can say median graduation rate percent, right? And now here I have this, um, and I can click save. Right? And when this comes up, it's now going to come up as these, uh, as these titles. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can use this to add particular notes. So if you note that when I, you notice that when I change something in the info window, it actually changes the info windows for all of my, um, for all of my entries. So if I needed to put a note on it, let's say there was some caveat to my data, uh, there's some data missing, something like that, I can go ahead back into the info window layout in custom, and I can say, hey, look, Note data reflects 2009-20, reflects um, 2006 for year cohort. Okay, uh, I lost my colon in there somewhere. Click save. Right? So, um, as you can see, I can also style that window with any kind of HTML that I want, which means that if I wanted to, too, I have an option to, I could also add additional information in another column. Let's say I had an image that went with each one. Well, there's no reason why I couldn't have a separate, ca uh, separate column in one of my tables that actually has a link to an image of the front of the school or um, even a chart or a graph. There's actually a whole ton of different possibilities, lots and lots of different things that you can do with this. Um, so this is just kind of touching on uh, touching on the most basic things. And of course, the customization, what's nice about this is it doesn't require a lot of coding. You can customize it, you know, right here in, in the graphical user interface. Um, we can use an automatic legend. Ah, this is fantastic. Um, this is something that actually didn't exist previously. So let's go ahead and source um, There we go. That is a huge feature, my friends, and that is not something that existed six months ago. Um, so they've, they've finally gotten the point. Um, so let's go ahead back here and go to the map styles, look at the legend. Uh, median. Ah, oh, so wonderful that they have that now. Um, and of course, our link text, this is interesting. Let's see what the default on this is. So this is actually taking this, this is actually linking to the data table itself, right? So this is linking back to our fusion table. Um, so that is a huge boon for all of you. Um, hopefully you I realize you hopefully can appreciate that. Um, I can make some other choices here too. I can, um, you know, decide whether I'm going to have lines, 
whether I go to line color, um, or sorry, uh, border color here has a default of gray, I could decide to make it um, zero opacity so that I had no outlines. Probably not a great idea in this case. Um, but again, you can see how there's tons and tons of options for customization here. Um, and really, sort of your imagination is the limit. Now, some of you might be wondering, um, well, sorry, the first thing we'll do is look at how we would actually include this somewhere. So in order to do this, I'm going to click Share. Now, this is the important thing, right? We're using Google Fusion Tables. This is similar to the work that we've done with the SQL API, um, which is that we have to make sure that our information is at least, quote unquote, unlisted in order to uh, view it publicly, right? If we want to put it on a website. Um, by publishing this, um, I have a couple of options. So I can either just have it as sort of a static link, like this. Right, where when someone loads it, it will take up their entire browser window. My other option is to generate, is to use this iframe code. And what an iframe is, we can, you can think of an iframe as essentially a window onto a web page. So it's a window on a web page that looks through to another web page. Um, and they've actually gone ahead and given you here this really nice, this is, this is if I wanted to create an entire separate web page. What I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to insert this into an existing project that I have. So I've copied that, um, I've copied that information. I am now going to open up an old project. Let's go ahead, an existing project that I have. So I'm going to unroll up Tana here. Okay. And here I am in my dynamic data chart two. Okay, I'm gonna open up my HTML page and this is the way that an iframe works. Basically, it just goes into a div just like anything else. I'm gonna say ID equals my map, right? And I can just paste my iframe code directly into my HTML page here. The thing to look out for here is the width and the height. So I've said that I want the window that looks into my map web page to be 500 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. So I do want to make sure that the styles on my map div uh, match that as well. Otherwise, we're going to start to see scroll bars. So let's go ahead and say my map width is going to be 500 pixels, height is going to be 300 pixels, right? And I'm going to go ahead and upload this back to I'm going to push this up to my website again, my Columbia Web. And where are we here? In dynamic data two. Over here, oops, come on. Okay, spring 2013, dynamic data two. Now, keep in mind, I haven't touched my JavaScript, haven't touched anything else, right? Because I didn't want any changes to that. Um, this is just a separate component that I'm lo loading into a separate div. And if I go to now, this is going to look really hideously ugly, of course, because I haven't done any other styling. But there's my map. Pretty sweet, right? So as you can see, it's a really simple thing to add an interactive map to my web page. Um, everything else stays. You can see that it moves itself around and sort of clears it for information. I can make this larger. I could put it in different places. Um, the last thing that I want to point out to you here is that if I make a change, a couple of things, right? Things that we would expect because this is a fusion table. If I edit this information, it's going to show up in any published map that is derived from that that has this table as a source, right? So if I go in here and edit the information, I'm going to see that change, right? So I'm not actually going to change it, but you know that. Uh, you get that point. The other thing is that the view that I have on this map when I generate this iframe code. So let's say that I, for some reason, wanted to, to narrow, zoom in on the tip of Manhattan, right? I'm talking about this particular part of the map. At the point that I generate this iframe code, it's going to reflect exactly the view of the map that I have at that time. So I can publish a different map with a slightly different view just using a new iframe code. 
And that's it. We'll go over all of this on Thursday.